Hi, my name is Ashley and I'm a mom of two little girls. I have a three-year-old named Kylie and I also have a 17-month-old named Mia. So it's actually really interesting that I'm even making this video for you guys today because I have never had any intention of homeschooling either of my children. And it's not that I don't think homeschooling isn't fabulous because it most 100% certainly is, but I'm a former public school teacher and I've always had a vision for my children to go to a brick and mortar school outside of our home. My husband and I have been planning to send our oldest daughter Kylie and then eventually the younger one Mia when she is eventually preschool age to a Montessori preschool that is nearby our home. And she was signed up to go there last December already and we've been very excitedly awaiting her to begin attending this month. And now that we are living in pandemic times, things are a lot different. Um, the school is actually still open and they are accepting in-person learners on a part of the week basis, but they did offer a fully remote option as well. And my husband and I discussed it, we went back and forth on it a lot, and just given the current health climate, we are not 100% comfortable sending her to school at this current moment in time. So we opted to do remote learning for her. So she's technically still attending the school, but but we're doing all of the remote work. And I had a feeling that it wasn't going to be exactly what I wanted for her Montessori preschool experience to be like. So I'm very glad that I decided to also supplement her learning at home with a basically full on Montessori homeschool experience. So she is currently doing both. She has a little bit of the electronic remote work that is being assigned to her through the school. And then she is also able to engage with all of the authentic Montessori materials and activities that I'm setting up for her here at home. And now that I'm really starting to dig into the planning and prep and execution process of homeschooling, I am realizing exactly how much work it really is. And I know that many of you guys are also in the same boat. You maybe were planning on homeschooling, maybe you weren't, but you're new to it and you're not exactly sure where to start. So I'm really hoping that by sharing our experience that maybe it will help some of you guys. So from one busy parent to another, today I'm going to start out by sharing with you my Montessori preschool, homeschool, storage, and planning process. So I've come to realize that there are actually a lot of different ways to plan your Montessori homeschool at any level. And one of the popular methods of doing so is by working around unit studies, where basically you choose a theme or a topic of study where all of the other activities that you're planning kind of revolve around it and they're tied to it in some way. So that is the system that I chose to use. It just made the most sense to me in my mind as I was thinking thinking about planning activities. So it's not the way that everyone does it, but it's something that I thought was going to work for us. And based on the fact that Kylie has very specific ideas about what she would like to learn about, for example, snakes was the first thing she said, I decided to use that as a springboard and we decided to make our very first unit study for the year on reptiles. Now I really wanted to be able to share with you guys exactly what the different activities are that I am introducing to Kylie during this unit just to give you guys an idea of the different possibilities for things that you could do. So even though I did all of my planning, uh, paper and pencil in a binder, which I will show you guys in just a little bit, I also translated all of that into an actual blog post on my blog, which I will link down below for you guys so that you can check it out and see exactly what all the different activities activities are and I've linked to all of the resources where I obtained each of the different activities. Many of them are free printables that you can get from a variety of different amazing Montessori bloggers and teachers that are online. Um, there was one activity pack that I purchased, but the majority of them are freebies that anyone can download and print for free. Also, the unit study activities are not a complete curriculum in and of themselves. They're more like supplementary materials and activities to help spice things up. So I'm going to be introducing those alongside some of the more traditional Montessori materials. For example, during this unit, I'm planning to bring out the pink tower. I'm going to introduce her to the number rods. And I'm also going to be playing a bunch of different um, phonetic sound games with her using the sandpaper letters. 
All right, so it is nighttime and I have just tucked the girls into bed, so you're gonna have to excuse the poor lighting, but this is where the girls' playroom is. I'm actually storing Kylie's homeschool materials, like different activities and work for her every day on the shelves now. So this is kind of like her work area. And then if you turn around and go down our hall over here, I was able to use this closet, which originally was a cleaning closet only, as my homeschool storage workspace. So um, I don't wanna go through all of the boxes because that in and of itself could be an entire video. And if that's something that you guys are interested in, like me showing you what's in all these boxes, I will happily do that for you. Just let me know down in the comments. But for today, I just kinda wanted to show you what my organization system is. So I do have a couple of um, random things up on the top, some blocks and a little ramp racer that I'm not still not sure what I want to do with. And for now, that's kind of where I'm storing them, but those are not really part of our homeschool materials per se. So the rest of it, on the other hand, is. So first on the top, I just have a couple of extra like baskets and things that I use for some of the larger activities. Um, some little extra Ziploc baggies and containers that are snap lids for things that have small parts so that Mia doesn't get into them and they're only for Kylie. As far as the storage boxes, they're all just like the ones with the little snap lids that come off. And I got them at Costco in a three pack and we just bought three three packs and that worked out beautifully for us. And then I already had this little smaller one laying around and it turns out it's the perfect size for our, our current collection of musical instruments. Um, so I've got the little box up here is for music. And then I don't put them in any particular order. They're just kind of however I stack them in there when I rotate, but I've got a hand-eye coordination bin, a sensorial bin, one for practical life down here, then I've got language, math, infant toddler materials, which is more like stuff for Mia now at this point, arts and crafts, my science, culture, and geography bin, which I have a feeling I'm eventually gonna have to break up into one for science and one for culture geography, but for now it all fits in the same bin, so I'm just kind of putting it all in there. And then down here is just our puzzles, all of our different types of puzzles. And like I said, I'm not gonna go through all of the boxes in this video, but just to give you guys like a little sneak peek as to how the different boxes are organized on the inside, because they all basically look the same. All right, so it doesn't look super organized right off the bat, but everything that's in here is organized into its own individual Ziploc bag by activity. So it's easy to just pull out and get it set up on the shelf for her. And if it's something larger, obviously, then it's just in here by itself. So just to give you an idea of some of the things that are in here, I've got her letter trace board there, her sandpaper letters, a set of DIY sandpaper letters, a couple of sets of the Lori Photo language cards, and her plastic slash metal insets that she's going to be using pretty soon that she's not tried just yet. A pack of sand for creating a sand letter writing tray for letter practice. A set of language objects that she'll be using in conjunction with the sandpaper letters pretty soon. And then just a couple of packs of different like classification cards and things that I've made for her in the past. So again, it's all organized by baggy or in there by itself. And basically all of the other containers look the same way. They're just themed by whatever the subject area, learning area is. So that is my storage system as it stands right now. And I purposefully chose this downstairs closet because of the fact that I used to have the things stored upstairs in the girls' rooms and it was just getting too much to have to go up and down the stairs constantly to get to the playroom. So having this right next to the playroom is super convenient. Anytime I have to do a rotation, I literally just start pulling these boxes out one by one and I stack them up right here in the hallway and then I will pull things off of the shelves, bring them straight back to the box, pull out the new activity that I want to have on the shelf for that week and then put it right Right back out there and then when I'm done everything gets slid right back into the closet and we're all set so having these in close proximity to each other is super convenient so this is the Montessori preschool homeschool planner that's a mouthful that I created for this year just from scratch based on what I needed as I was planning and I'm sure it'll probably evolve a little bit as time goes on but for right now I used it already for the first unit and it's working out great so I figured I would share it with you guys just so you can kind of get a glimpse into how I'm doing my planning 
and if you are interested in using the templates that I have in the planner, I will go ahead and link to them in the description box down below. It's just a Google Doc that I created that you're welcome to make a copy of and edit as you please and then print it out for yourself if you'd like. So let's go ahead and take a peek at what's inside. So over here in the front pocket of the cover, I've got just a couple of printables that I have not cut and laminated yet coming up for future activities in this unit. And we did decide to start with reptiles. So I just have them tucked here this way. I don't forget and they're in order of how I need them so that I can very easily find them as I'm flipping through my planner pages and figuring out what I need to prepare for the following week. Over here, the first page of my planner is my monthly unit planner. So I decided that it would be kind of nice to be able to look at what my different units are and roughly how long I think I might be doing them for throughout the whole year, just kind of like a year at a glance. So I decided to start out with reptiles because Kylie was asking to learn about snakes. So that was our first unit and I had it set for two weeks, just like the rest of August basically, and then for another week into September, just based on the number of materials that I had it was able to cover that long so I brought it into the beginning of September and then I roughed out just a couple of other topics that I thought she might be interested in learning about and I also tried to coordinate them to like the fall season for October and then farming and harvest for November and then just a short little like mini unit for a week on each of the holidays that we celebrate here as a family I thought that would be fun so these are definitely subject to change I don't have anything set in stone this was kind of just me brainstorming what I think I might like to do with her. She had also mentioned she wanted to learn about dogs, so I thought we'd do a small thing about pets and dogs and maybe squeeze in dinosaurs if we can, but again, it's all subject to change. So as I finish up through December, I will reassess kind of where we are and then I'll plan out the remaining months for the second half of the year. The second page of the planner is a unit study activities list or sheet kind of also at a glance. So as I was planning out and picking different activities, I was organizing them by the different learning area. So if it was something that definitely was a math focused activity, then I jotted it down in here. This way I could kind of see at a glance how many activities I had for each of the different learning areas. And as you can see, I was not able to make it super um, equal across the different learning areas, which was my original goal. But I figured it's our first unit and I didn't want to overwhelm us too much right out of the gate. So this is what I came up with and I just decided to go with it. But there are six different spaces for six potential activities for each unit. And I created six so that I would have plenty of space, but my idea was that I would have hopefully at least four in each area, one for each week um, of the month. So again, it didn't quite work out that way this time, but that was what the idea was that I had when I created this sheet. You might also notice that I have several little extra notations on here that I kind of added that I realized I needed after the fact. And they're just like little check marks for me as I was planning, I was marking off when I had completed creating something or at least getting it saved to my computer. And then I also wrote down where I got each of the resources just in case I needed to go back for any reason and find it again. So that was the unit study activities sheet at a glance. And this is probably the one that I used the most as I was planning. The second half of the unit study activities guide sheet that I created was one to list out what materials I already had on hand, like either I already had it done from a while ago or it was something that I had printed out already and I didn't need to do anything further other than perhaps cut it out and laminate it. Um, the second box was materials I still need to create or buy, obviously, pretty self-explanatory. So I just listed out anything that I still need to make. And then I had an other notes section because I figured there'd be something that I would need to write down that I wasn't anticipating and I was right. I needed to write down a list of books that I planned to read with her at some point that were specific to the unit. So I might actually change this to say books, but for now I just have it left as other notes. And then I have a series of calendars just for each month of the year. And from here, I just picked one activity that I planned to introduce to her each day. And I jotted down like what subject area it was. So I've got like geography, practical life, sensorial. Um, but I picked one for each day because again, I didn't wanna overwhelm us right out of the gate. There were a couple days where I jotted down two different lessons that I wanted to give her because I figured they'd be easy to do together in one day. Um, but that is how I decided to do it because she does have 
other work that she's doing for remote learning for the brick and mortar school that she should have been attending. So I, again, I didn't want to overwhelm us. You certainly could do more than one per day if you wanted to, um, but that was what we decided to go with at least to start out. And how I organized them by each day was just kind of roughly spreading out the different subjects so that it wasn't just like all the language activities squished together or all the math squished together. I tried to pick something different every day the best that I could. And it would have worked out a lot more evenly if I had had an equal number of activities for all the different learning areas, but I didn't. So I kind of just went with what made the most sense to me um, by each week. And again, these activities came from this sheet right here. I just kind of sequenced them onto the calendar in a way that was most logical to me. So as I said, our reptile unit continued into the first week of September and that's where it stopped. And I have not planned the next unit yet, which is why the remainder of September is still blank. But I do have calendar pages already plugged in for the remainder of the year so that I don't have to worry about printing them at a later date. And at the end of the calendars, I have a weekly lesson plan sheet. And I just printed out a whole bunch of blank copies of this one because I had fully intended to actually use this as part of my planning. And I probably will for the next unit. I just got so carried away when I was planning uh, for the first one that I completely forgot about this sheet. But honestly, I think this is probably a little bit easier to use as you are prepping for each week because you have more space to really write out the name of the activity, Think about what you actually need to gather together, like right down to any printables that you have or manipulatives or um, like baskets and trays, things like that. You've got a lot more space to put all that on here. And then it can also be used as an observation sheet. And this is a system that I have seen in several other places now. So I thought it would be a good one to use. It's quick and efficient. You have three different columns. One says I, this one's a check, and this one's a check plus. And basically what's, what it's for is if the activity has just been introduced that week, then you can check off that it was introduced for the very first time. If it's an activity that say your child has seen before, but they're still working on it, they haven't mastered it yet, then you would give them a little check just to remind yourself that it's a work in progress. And then if there's an activity that you introduced that week that you have observed that they actually finally mastered, then you can check off that they mastered it in the check plus column. So it's kind of like a lesson planner and an observation sheet all in one. Um, and I did put reminders of what these mean down at the bottom, just in case one of you guys is using it so that you can remember. And I did also leave space for the child's name in case you have more than one child that you're creating lesson plans for, as well as the date for the week that the specific plan is actually for. And again, the reason that I actually forgot to use it entirely is simply because this sheet is not any different than the calendar. You would basically just take each activity from each day and plug it into all of the different boxes on these right here. Um, and again, it just gives you a little bit more space than trying to cram it into the tiny little calendar spots that you have here. So really when you're planning, if you're more of a calendar person and you like to have a whole month at a glance, like I do, I guess, apparently, then this sheet would be perfect for you. But if you like to have a little bit more writing space and you like to have just one week at a time in front of you so that it's not too overwhelming, then the weekly lesson plan would work well for that. So you can use both, you can use one or the other, it doesn't really matter. As you can see, I made it work without using this, but I think that I definitely want to for the unit going forward, because I fully intended to in the first place. And in case you are at all feeling overwhelmed because you are not used to the lesson planning process, I did include a how to use this planner like step by step sheet for you just as a reference guide as well as some information about unit study planning and a whole bunch of topic ideas for you just to kind of go through to see if there's anything that you might think strikes your child's interest. So that should help you out in getting started as well. So that is basically it. The planner, like I said, it's very basic. It's nothing super fancy, but it's enough to get your thoughts organized and figure out exactly what activities that you want to provide your child, making sure that you're hitting all the different learning areas, giving you space to actually sequence them out however you think makes the most sense. And that's really all you need it for. And again, if you want some more space to really get into the nitty gritty, then you can use the weekly lesson plan as well.
You may have noticed that I also have tabs along the side that actually have all of the different subject areas written on them. These are not actually part of my planner. This binder was originally a resource binder that I have uh, just different materials from other websites and blogs and other resources that I'll be happy to share with you guys in the description box. But I decided to put my planner into the front of this binder. This way I had all of my resources and my planning in one place. But the, the planner itself is just this beginning part right here. So it's pretty plain and simple. And again, link to the templates that I showed you guys down below if you're interested in tweaking it or just using it as is, but using this for your planning at home as well. So I just wanted to add because I know that some of you may be curious exactly how I'm rotating the homeschool activities that I have out for Kylie each day. And the system that I'm using is a little bit different than what I'm used to. In the past, and this is actually what I'm still doing with Mia, I was doing a once a week rotation where I would assess what was being used, what wasn't being used, and I would take off the things that were kind of collecting dust and replace them with something different. For Kylie, I decided that I don't want to put everything out on her shelves that I have planned for that week. I don't want to put it all out at once because I, I've observed that she likes to kind of investigate everything that's available if she notices there are new things. And I don't want her to investigate every single activity all on the first day and then kind of lose interest. So I've decided instead to kind of drip the activities out to her one day at a time. So what I'm doing is I'm using my planner and looking at what the new activity is that I have planned for each day and I'm going to the shelf each night and just pulling off that one activity that was the old one from the week prior and I'm replacing it with the new activity that I'm planning to introduce to her the next day. And that's working out really well because then she has an opportunity to really focus and concentrate on that one new activity that's really drawing her interest because it's new. And then she still has an opportunity throughout the day to revisit the other activities that she has already been introduced to in the days prior. And just in case it wasn't clear, the activity that I remove from the shelf when I do this each night is always the same learning area as the one that's going on. So if I'm planning for a new language activity the next day, then I will take off the old language activity from the week prior and that's what's going out. And if for any reason I'm observing that Kylie is very engaged and interested in a certain activity, then I might reconsider placing it somewhere else on our calendar instead so that I can leave that activity out and I don't have to pull it off the shelf just to replace it with a new one. Because the whole idea is to follow your child's interests in a Montessori environment. So there's no reason for me to get rid of an activity that she's still engaged by. So in that sense, the calendar is a little bit fluid because I do have to be able to move things around based on what I see her engaging with. But as of right now, so far, that one week time frame seems to be working as far as her level of interest goes for each of the different activities. And she right now seems ready for a new activity by the time I'm ready to rotate to the next one. So, so far it's been working out beautifully. And on a side note, it has definitely been very interesting having a young toddler, my daughter Mia, in the same area as all of Kylie's homeschool activities set up on the shelves because she also notices that there are new things out and she sees Kylie engaging with them and she is also very interested and she wants to go over and touch and imitate what she sees her older sister doing and so it creates a bit of a mess at times that I'm constantly having to pick up behind her and help her put things back on the shelf and I also have to make sure that any of the smaller pieces that I have for Kylie for some of these activities are all sealed up in containers that Mia cannot get open so that it doesn't present a choking hazard so it's been a bit of a trial and error process, but I think so far we've been managing okay. So I know I already mentioned this a couple of times throughout the video, but I just wanted to reiterate one more time in case you missed it. I'm going to be putting links to all of the resources that I shared with you in the video today in the description box down below. So there will be a link to the reptile unit study blog post that I created that has all of the activities, links, everything you need to follow along and maybe even try some of the same activities, as well as my homeschool planner template if you want to be able to print it out for your 
yourself or edit it, tweak it however you need to, to make it work for you at home. That's 100% free. It's just something that I created and I don't mind sharing with you guys. And then I will also put a few other links to some of the homeschooling resources that I personally have found really helpful in getting myself started. Going forward, I'm hoping to be able to share more of our Montessori preschool homeschool experience with you guys on the YouTube channel. I'm not exactly sure how I want to roll that out to you guys. If you have any specific requests of certain aspects of the homeschooling experience that you're interested in seeing, then by all means, please leave them in the comments down below so that I can incorporate that into future videos. But there will be more updates coming in the near future, so stay tuned for those. If you are interested in learning more about doing Montessori at home with your children, I do offer a comprehensive e-course that walks you through it step by step. So I will also leave a link to that in the description box down below just in case you're interested in learning more about it. And just in case you are new to my channel, I did want to let you know that this video is part of a much larger series called Montessori at Home, which is aimed at providing practical tips and advice for busy parents like you and I for implementing Montessori philosophies at home with your children. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in watching more of, then you might consider subscribing to my channel. This way you don't miss a new video because I do upload a new one just like this one every single week. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you next time.